moving around the city looking for the right objects to scan can be a time consuming but fun process. Usually you won't find the object you want right away so a lot of times it's just a matter of walking around and seeing what's there. But doing that while carrying a lot of equipment can be a recipe for disaster. So in this video, I'll share with you my process of going around finding the right object without getting bogged down by the time consuming scanning process. Let's go! For me, scanning outdoor objects is always a two step process. The first step is always location scouting. Let's say that we want to find some rocks and tree barks to use on a scene. Instead of carrying around all the bulky and heavy scanning equipment like lenses, tripods and diffusers, I just leave all that back home and focus first on finding the right objects. So at this stage, the only thing I have with me is my phone. In this case, because I'm documenting the whole process, I have some more stuff with me like my camera, a tripod and a bag, but usually it's just me and my phone. I'm looking for the right sized rock and this is where traveling light helps a lot. Finding exactly what you have in mind might take a while. This one is big enough and it also has some interesting details all around, so I think this one is a good candidate. Usually I just take one or two snaps from different angles, but in this case because I want to see how the rock will fit into my 3D scene, I will take a few more. Enough for a quick and dirty scan. At this point I'm not at all concerned about the uneven lighting or the hard shadows. This scan is for evaluation purposes only. The whole process doesn't take much time, I've only spent around 3 minutes capturing a 360 view of the rock. My concern right now is covering a big enough area and finding as many alternatives as possible so I don't fuss too much about getting super clean data. And with that said, time to move on to the next spot. There are no big rocks so far, but uh, since this tree trunk looks interesting enough, we'll do a quick stop. I like the overall shape and the details, so I'm gonna take a few snaps. This one didn't take long as well. I've only spent around 4 minutes grabbing as much of the trunk as possible. This time it took a little bit longer because I wanted to grab some more close-ups, but I'm still moving fast from spot to spot. As you can see, the lighting is all over the place and the trunk has a lot of heavy shadows, but for now it's all fine. After some more walking around, I found a few more nice looking rocks. The good thing with location scouting is that you will also find elements that you might not need right now, but it's good to have them catalogued for easy reference in the future. This one for example is a very interesting building, so I did a quick stop here as well and grabbed a few quick snaps. Now once back in the office it's time to go through the images and see what looks interesting. I don't really bother processing every single object. I go through the scan process only with the objects I think will work best. And here's a quick tip about image conversion. I personally use the high efficiency format on my phone instead of JPEGs. The application I use uh, for Photogrammetry does accept that format, but in case yours doesn't, you can always quickly convert those images in an automatic way. I'm not a fan of Lightroom for these sort of things, so I'll show you how it's done in Photoshop. You just have to go to scripts, and then image processor, and there we can pick the source folder, the exporting folder and the image format. And that's it, Photoshop will handle the rest. Now after going through the scanning process, here's how our objects look. As you can see, even though I didn't spend too much time per object, we have good enough information to evaluate the form. Yes, the lighting is all over the place and there are areas that don't have enough resolution, but we can sort these things out when we capture the object properly. That is definitely a nice looking rock considering that we didn't spend more than 3 minutes to capture the images.
Now, here's how the tree trunk looks. Like before, some areas are more detailed than others, but for a 4 minute snap, it's not bad at all. There are inconsistencies in lighting, but I can live with that. And finally, here's how the building looks. All that's left now is the second step in the process, capturing the objects. Now that we know which objects we want to capture, we can go back to the location with proper equipment and start taking pictures. It might sound like a chore if we do it this way, but we're actually being more strategic with our time. By separating the process into two steps, we can cover a bigger area, find a lot of alternatives for the objects we need, and also be more selective with what we scan. I won't bore you with the whole uh, scanning process since I already have uh, several videos about that, but here's a few quick tips about outdoor scanning. To avoid hard shadows, use a diffuser. Of course, that depends on the size of the object, but for smallish objects like rocks or tree trunks, a diffuser is a must. You don't have to go with something huge. If you get one of these folding ones, it's going to be easy to carry around and you won't be weighed down by the weight of it. These things are quite light. This one, for example, expands to a bit over 1 meter in width, but when folded, it's just 40 centimeters wide. This silly looking wide circle will make a huge difference when snapping pictures, especially if you're going to shoot under harsh lighting. Here's how the scene looks under direct lighting, and here's how it looks with a diffuser. That is quite a difference. If you don't want to carry around a diffuser, your next best bet is to shoot under cloudy conditions. But if you live in a country where it's sunny most days of the year, like in my case, then the diffuser is the best way to go. Since you don't want to be weighed down by your equipment, try to use very light hardware. Let's take as an example tripods. Heavier ones might be sturdier and could withstand heavy winds, but you could always weigh down a lightweight tripod with whatever's around you. 200 grams extra might not sound like much, but once you start moving about, it adds up quite fast. So get rid of anything that might be a nuisance. Extra lenses, heavy tripods, even clothing gear should stay behind. Try to make do with as little gear as possible. Take more pictures than what you think you'll need. Going back to the same location might not be easy or convenient, so better be safe than sorry. So when you think you've captured everything you need, shoot some more. Cover more angles, go closer, and take as many overlapping pictures as possible. Getting pictures out of the scanning calculation is much easier than going back for reshoots. Start getting comfortable shooting in public. You might feel self-conscious, but keep in mind that people don't really care about what you're doing. They have other things to worry about. Unless you're shooting in a location where you're not supposed to, then you might have some issues. But in general, public spaces like parks don't need any special permit. So ignore your inner voice and get comfortable around people. And I think I've pretty much covered everything I had in mind. I'll have the links of uh, all of my equipment in the description below, so if you want to get something similar, you know where to find it. To summarize, even though you're splitting the work in more days than one, you're actually working smarter rather than harder. So don't be afraid to first scout for the ideal location and then come back to it for the actual capturing process. You'll be able to capture better looking objects and with fewer issues. By doing a test run, you'll be able to avoid pitfalls you might not have foreseen otherwise. Anyway, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.